time now for the business update and I'm joined in the studio by Brian Quinn. Good morning, Brian. Hello. Now we're starting with a big day for the Chinese aviation industry. China's first domestically produced passenger jetliner took off just moments ago on its maiden flight. The C919 is designed to compete with industry mainstays like Boeing 737 and the Airbus A320. Its production has seen years of manufacturing delays, but now the Chinese are hoping it will help them break into the global aviation market. Catherine Clifford reports. Takeoff for the first ever made in China large frame aircraft as it begins its maiden test flight. The jets made by state owned Commercial Aircraft Corporation of China, or COMAC. The plane comes with 155 to 175 seats with a standard flight length of just over 4,000 kilometers. With this jet, Beijing wants to compete with the Airbus A320 and Boeing 737 in a global jet market worth an estimated $2 trillion over the next 20 years. Comac says it has 570 orders so far, the majority from state-owned airlines. 23 customers include a handful of foreign buyers such as Thailand's City Airways. However, the jet still has a long journey ahead before reaching commercial use. China's first homemade regional jet, the ARJ-21, made its maiden passenger flight in June last year, eight years after its first test flight. The C919 has seen its test flight postponed twice since 2014. I put the brakes on and the plane started to shake. If we continued the test, it might have some harmful effect on the plane, so we decided to stop the test. Analysts say these production delays mean China's new jet will lag behind its competition. Another potential setback, Beijing's pushing for European and US regulators to recognize its certification. Without this, China would only be able to sell the jet to a handful of countries that accept its standards. OK, Brian, how are the markets looking today? Well, one big market driver today, the ongoing fall in the price of oil. Oil's major markers continuing to drop on fears of an unstoppable global oversupply. Prices now near a five-month low. Asian markets today took losses on commodities and energy shares with the Hong Seng and the Shanghai Composite shedding around a percent each. The Nikkei and the Kospi are closed today. Here in Europe, the big story, of course, Sunday's final round in the French presidential election. European markets pulling back a bit at open after rallying yesterday on the performance of centrist Emmanuel Macron in Wednesday's debate against the far right's Marine Le Pen. Let's take a look at uh, some more of today's business headlines now. A rocket carrying telecom satellites has finally lifted off in French Guiana. The launch was delayed for over a month as a general strike crippled the French territory. Those satellites are now in orbit. One will provide military communications and broadband services for Brazil. The other video and data services for South Korea. The U.S. government has launched a criminal probe into Uber following the company's use of secret software designed to evade legal oversight. Uber's Grayball program identified ride requests from potential transportation authorities and then rejected them, uh, allegedly in order to dodge sting operations for violating local laws. And U.S. agribusiness giant Arthur Daniels Midland says it's planning an expansion in Europe this year. That statement contradicts previous media reports that it would be cutting operations in the UK, Spain and Ireland. ADM is in the midst of a global restructuring as market conditions in international grain trading are hurting its profits. And billionaire investor Warren Buffett has sold off a third of his stake in IBM. The investment was one of the larger shares held by Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway firm. It represents a gamble that apparently was not a winning one. IBM was down nearly 12% on the quarter after weak revenue reports. Finally, uh, Brian, it looks like Europe is uh, once again following an American trend. Yeah, Europeans are increasingly adopting electric vehicles. 2016 saw meager growth in battery-powered cars here on the continent, while sales in the U.S. were taking off. It looks like that gap is beginning to close now, however as electric vehicle sales jumped 38% for the first three months of the year. A new model from Renault is seeing good numbers in Germany and Spain, with Volkswagen and BMW both rushing to get their electric cars to market. That growth, though, still no match for the U.S., where sales were up 49%. We like our electric cars over there. They certainly do. Brian, thank you so much for that. Uh, Brian Quinn there with the uh, latest business news.